Thank you. I now call Tim Fairley to be followed by Ariane Bird, just around six minutes. Mr Fairley. Thank you very much, President Officer. Um, President Officer, this bill is the latest iteration in response to the completely heinous and unacceptable practice of raptor persecution in Scotland's countryside. Now, it has undoubtedly grown in scope since the Verity Report, but that is no bad thing as long as we get the balance right in protecting wildlife, helping to tackle climate change, creating biodiversity and meeting the needs of those hard-working men and women who are the bedrock of our rural population. The farmers, the shepherds, the cattlemen, the tractormen, the keepers, the estate workers and all the associated downstream sector workers. And it is in that spirit, President Officer, that I am recognising those rural workers. I, I am delighted to wear this handcrafted piece from my constituent, Iona McGregor, who was previously mentioned by um, Rachel Hamilton, who lives in the Low Yamond Hills, the very same glen that I farmed before I came into this place. And it is support of all those workers that I'm proud to wear this today. Because they are an essential component of our rural population, helping to keep local schools, pubs, shops, garages, and in winter, rural roads open. They are also the fourth emergency service, as my colleague Kate Forbes has just alluded to. And depopulation in our rural communities is something that we should not only be discouraging, but actively seeking to reverse. Now, there is no doubt areas of this bill are going to be contentious, and the stage two debate will undoubtedly be an exercise in negotiation and compromise, which I would encourage everyone in this chamber to have, because those negotiations and compromises will be with the people who are sitting in the gallery. But I very much welcome the Minister's plan to bring an amendment to end to the trap tampering um, legislation that we talked about earlier on. Now, I will be supporting the general principles of the bill without hesitation, and I look forward to stage two sessions in order to shape a bill so that it works in the spirit of what the bill is set out to do. And given the function of this bill and the general acceptance of the almost entire population of this country, that climate change and biodiversity loss is not only a matter, is not only a serious matter, but is in fact it's essential to manage. It's sometimes very interesting to hear, though, some of the outcry from people when they realise that what that means is that actions in their area are needed to tackle the issues. And all of a sudden, the enthusiasm and the agreement that we need to get something done suddenly changes. And usually to the point where, yes, we need to agree to do something, but just not here. With that in mind, I am very heartened with the conversations with almost to a person, the farmers, land managers and keepers, who not only accept the challenges we face in climate change and biodiversity loss, but they are looking to actively play their part in reversing the decline and delivering for nature, delivering for the climate and, as importantly, delivering for the rural communities whose very existence relies on a viable, healthy, working rural environment that we are all striving to deliver. President Officer, as a boy, my fascination was a total preoccupation with birds, and in particular birds of prey, with my favourite being the peregrine falcon. So I have to say, I was deeply miffed when Bob Doris was made the wildlife champion. The spring bun from Glasgow, MSP, I have to say, was made the wildlife champion for the peregrine falcon. I questioned the validity of Bob Doris. OK. John Mason. Would the member accept that we do have birds of prey in Glasgow and we look after them very well? Jim Fairley. <laughs> you should have waited, John. <laughs> I question the validity of bold Bob Doris getting in before to pinch my peregrine falcon from out in front of me because, after all, Bob is a city boy and I'm a chukta. So surely it's only right that the country loon gets the majestic peregrine falcon to champion. But as I sat in my office here in the Parliament looking out of the window for inspiration, I was more than a bit surprised to witness a peregrine falcon flying over the buildings of our capital, our city, and had to concede that Bob, the city boy, was absolutely entitled to his peregrine when they were now in such rude health as to be hunting the city pigeons over our capital city. Mind you, I got the most account iconic of moorland birds, the curlew, so I'm delighted to be that champion and all ground nesters, which protecting is what this bill is all about. <coughs> <clears throat> I may have made light in this contribution of some of the serious issues we really need to tackle and we seek to do in this bill, but I am determined to work with all the stakeholders as we progress the bill through stage two at committee to try and find the right compromises <clears throat> in the same way as we did with the Hunting with Dogs bill so that we continue to represent our rural constituencies and tackle the issues. I certainly will give way, yeah. Stephen Kerr. Way, 
he's talking about compromises. He hasn't quite addressed the, some of the other issues in this bill. Which areas is he looking for the government to make some compromises? Tim Fairley. There are numerous areas that are going to be decided through compromise, through conversation and through quiet negotiation with the stakeholders at hand. So there's many of them to be getting through. However, we've had Finlay Carson, Rachel Hamilton and Oliver Mundell all say that the licensing scheme for hunting with dogs has been a disaster. Well, I can tell you, the first licence has already been granted for hunting with dogs. It's happening here today, and the, the Athel and Bredalbin have got their licence. So Nature Scott are working with the practitioners to make sure that they can make this work. However, President Officer, I cannot mention the Peregrine Falcon through all of my iterations today without passing comment on the perpetrators of the absolutely heinous crime committed in the Pentlands this week where an illegally set pole trap was used to catch and kill one of these magnificent birds. And I do not have the words in me to express my disgust at the perpetrators and hope that in the fullness of time they are caught and the full force of the law is brought to them. Thank you very much. Thank you.